Welcome to the Group Chat Chronicles. I'm your host, Dev. With me, as always, I have Leek. What's up, Leek? Yo, what's up, good people? And on this episode, we have two guests entering the chat. We have Greg and Haji. What's up, y'all? Yo, what's up with it, bro? What it do? <laughs> and on this podcast, we always give our own takes on a lot of topics. And as always, I want to thank the viewers and the listeners for supporting. And as y'all know, to start the podcast, we always go over what we have been tuned into. So, Leek, what have you been tuned into? Yo, what's this new vid? Miss a song um, called... Uh what was it called? Red Louis Vuitton? Something mm-hmm. like that? I've been having that shit on repeat. I ain't even gonna cap. Alright. That's about it though. <laughs> <laughs> That's all said Vic Mensa? Yeah. I had seen I had seen something on Twitter about I forget what it was precisely, I can't really remember. Mm-hmm. But like I had seen him post something on uh on Twitter. Like now that you mentioned, I didn't know it was so it's an album that you saying? Nah, it was just a song, just a, a single. Song? It's okay. what is him, um, with Thundercat and I don't know who the girl is. It's a girl. I, I don't remember the name. Okay. I don't want to lie. I'm going to have to go back because, you know, when you're skimming through, <laughs> I just happened to see it. I just didn't it actually. It was a little vibe. It was a little vibe. Okay. I ain't know all I used to fuck with Vic Menta heavy back then, back in the day. Oh, so you familiar yeah. with yeah. that? Yeah. yeah, I know Vic Menta. <laughs> all right. What, what you been to into, Aji? Uh, I've been listening to a lot of Leaf Ward. I've been listening to a lot of <laughs> okay. Babyface Ray, Ice, Ice Ware Vezo. Um... That's just like the rap style. I also listen to like a lot of R and B. So it's like I've been listening to a lot of Lucky Day. You know, okay. I've been listening to a lot of Brent Fires, of course. Um, K Forest, he's a very that's another like underground R and B artist that I like yeah. to listen to a yeah, lot. Okay. Um it's a whole it's a whole catalog. Drake, of course, obviously you can never go wrong with no Drake. <laughs> that's pretty much like the, the gist of what I've been listening to. All right, what about you, Greg? As you you know my body because I'm all orange like R&B. <laughs> like I you know I listen to rap but like I gotta listen to R and B so it's just I've been it's I've been keeping like a tight circle but I've been venturing out discovering new artists and shit like that but mainly right now it's just like division. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can't forget about the vision. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my guys like, right there. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah, <laughs> damn, now I'm upset. I forgot that. Like so that like it's just like day two they first two albums to me is like flawless. Them nah, nah, like, this shit that this shit they got right now, folks. Yeah, yeah, nah, lie. I ain't gonna lie. I listen to it. I gotta go back and listen to it again. Bro. They're like to me, it's just like those two like albums. The first one, like September fifth, mm-hmm. and then the other joint. What was it called? Morning, 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 after. morning after. Yeah, it's just like it's just crazy to me because even like when I still feel the same way about it when I first listened to it, and I'm like, yo, every song in this bitch is a hit. Like this, <laughs> top to yeah. bottom, this shit slaps like. I'm an album type of guy. Yeah, my me two too, favorite me too. songs off the most recent album, Take It Slow and Daniel's Interlude. Hell yeah. yeah. That's my shit. Yeah, that Daniel's Interlude, I, that, I felt yo, that in my soul. Like, damn, I felt like he was talking about me. <laughs> yo, nah. Nah, like, yo, y'all understand. <laughs> like, damn. Yo, y'all yo, I relate heavily to this. <laughs> no, nah, y'all understand. I had that album on, I, I played that album at least once a day for like two weeks straight. Nah, that's no, nah, was a little longer than that, bro. No bullshit. That shit was like. It was a little longer than that. That's perfect. I mean, nah, nah. nah, understandable. Nah, nah, it was like two weeks. to like that for real. Perfectly understandable. Uh, I know for me, it was I knew uh, Corday and Anderson Pat. That shit go hard. Oh, I heard that. That song do go hard. I forgot about. I got to tune one. in. Yeah, I heard yeah, it. It was. I saw the video. Yeah. yeah, it goes. It goes hard. Yeah, other than that, outside the same stuff I've been listening to and watching, ain't nothing new. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna start off with a sports topic. So I'm a Bears fan. Greg's a Bears fan. Uh, <laughs> facts. <laughs> but um, fuck all state by the way. Oh, but um, <laughs> 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 but no, though. So um. We have the f- number one overall pick in this year's draft because they was won three games. Mm-hmm. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I want to ask y'all, what do y'all think what we are going to do with this number one pick? Go ahead, Greg. Sh- <laughs> Honestly, what we should do, and I feel like in this new regime, I can place a decent amount of trust in what we should do is obviously trade that pick away mm-hmm. because we can trade that pick away, still stay within the top five or at least top ten. Mm-hmm. And then because the main issue is just like there's no one player, even defensively, if you want to show up the defense, there's no one player that's going to do that for us yeah. in this draft. There's no like bona fide star that's just like if you got that pick, you got to take it. Mm-hmm. There's no player like that yeah. unless mm-hmm. we're talking about a team needy quarter, like he's a quarterback. Mm-hmm. So trade that pick away, get as much draft compensation as you can, and 
what I would say is whatever first round pick you get, so say like Carolina, mm-hmm. get that first round pick, but then spice it up. Get multiple years of at least a second round pick. So yeah. maybe next year and then the year after that, get those two second round picks. Yeah. Because the next couple of drafts is going to be how this draft is. It's going to be a lot of talent mm-hmm. that's first round worthy. Yeah. But because of all these other elite athletes, they're going to be pushed back to the second round. So you, there's going to be gems. There's going to mm-hmm. be steals. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's what the Bears need to do because it's a whole project. Yeah. I mean, I look at it, it's a win and a win more situation. Because if we keep the pick, we get who the fuck we want at the end of the day. We trade the pick, we get more picks, and we still going to get who the fuck we want. Yeah. So I don't Pretty think, I, I, yeah. I really don't think, it's, I hope, I think we should trade a pick, get more picks and whatnot. But I don't. I'm not even mad because we still got 100 M's in cap for this season, for this raging oh, yeah. period. So, like, <laughs> yeah, nah, I, ain't even, I ain't even tripped. I don't really care what they do, to be honest. Then yeah. there's my team. The Eagles were still in the playoffs. We're still – we actually played today. Hopefully, we can pull it out, make <laughs> it back to, to the Super shout Bowl. Out Jalen Hurts. Right, right. Shout out to my boy Jalen Hurts. I'm also an Oklahoma fan, so, you know, this is even sweeter for me. Mm-hmm. His last season being our quarterback – before he got drafted, it took him in the second round. That surprised everybody. So, like, I'm just even more excited to see him actually stand on everything that I knew for a fact he could do. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, it was shown. And they looked at us like we were crazy for taking him in the second round. And I ain't going to lie, it was a little mixy just because of, like, how like all the, the chain of events were happening. Like, we just signed – Carson Wentz at the time to a max contract mm-hmm. made him probably I think the fourth the fourth highest paid quarterback at the time. Mm-hmm. We sign a uh, we get Nick Sirianni, who was meant to be for Carson Wentz, you know, help him mold. But then we trade, well, we draft Jalen Hurts as like a form of insurance. I look at it because Carson Wentz couldn't, you know, stay healthy. Yeah, he yeah. It wasn't as durable as he was. Yeah. So like I felt as though it was a smart thing, but at the same time it kind of fucked him up mentally. So like. That season alone, that was like his worst season. You know, he led the league in mm-hmm. interceptions. You know, it was just bad. We, we we didn't have a winning record. Got benched, and boy, ended up getting traded. But like, the, the process wasn't that long. That's why it's like I'm just excited to see us actually show up and win. <laughs> Fuck the 49ers too for all the fans. You know, just because you know a lot of people was trying to doubt us. A lot of people was trying to you know just automatically give them the win, and it's like. I hate the Cowboys with a passion, but shout out to them because they kind of exposed the 49ers. I say this all the time. Mm-hmm. They kind of exposed them for us. They exposed Brock Purdy. So it's like we'll see what happens today. <laughs> and hopefully the Bengals win just because either or. I feel like it would be a, like, a good Super Bowl because, one, if the Bengals win, my boy Jalen Hurst can get his revenge. Uh, Joe Burrow for what they did to us in the final four that year. <laughs> 20, <laughs> I told her. 2019, I was, yeah. I was talking, I was talking to him us. about when we was in Houston, how both our teams went out sad. Yeah. <laughs> my, team, my team got a hold on national television. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like we get the – It was I, a fumble. It's yeah. either that or – It was a fumble. The Kansas City Super Bowl against Philly, you know, Andy Reid being our former coach. That would be a nice moment as well for him to face his former team and lose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do you think the Bears should do with the pick, bro? Uh, I honestly think the Bears should trade it, like how he said. You know, the Bears, it's, like I said, there's not like a, a bona fide stud that you actually need that's going to change the whole direction of your team. So it's like if you can get a lot – but there is a lot of teams out there that could definitely use that number one pick. Mm-hmm. You know, the Colts being one, I know that for a fact they need a quarterback. I know they're going to take a quarterback this year. If they don't, they're retarded. My apologies. <laughs> but they would be mentally challenged. <laughs> Damn, yo, <laughs> this is <ain't> stupid. <laughs> yeah, they, they would that would be a, a very odd wrong move. decision. Yeah. 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 Right. We're gonna go with odd. It would be an odd move. Yeah, yeah it'd be a it'd be a very odd so move for them not to go with the number one pick. Also, you got a team like I like just looking at like the mock drafts that a lot of the experts been, you know, putting out there. Like, they're saying Houston's going quarterback. And it's like, I don't think they necessarily need a quarterback because the guy they have now, like, I don't think he's that bad. No, he's really not. It's nah, just it's their just team. Bright, bright yeah. 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 Their team just from top to bottom isn't good. But see, they're like, and I, I low key feel a little bit sorry for them, even though that's another poorly ran franchise. They're in a position where it's like, they kind of got to take a quarterback just because they're going to fall to that pressure. The right. same way, like, how the Jets did. 
they knew they needed to take a quarterback. This is <laughs> I don't think they're gonna mess up the way the Jets did. Yeah. They just picked the wrong quarterback. Yeah, they should have picked Justin. Yeah. So I feel like they're most likely gonna go with Bryce Young, which isn't a bad pick. It's just the only thing I worry about with Bryce Young is just like it's his size. If he was more like a Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray in terms of body weight, then I'd be like, all right, cool, he can pan out. But one thing that's going to worry me is just like his frame. He's only what, like what, one eighty five? I think yeah, something like six that. foot, one eighty five. So he could, you know, he could put on weight. It could be muscle. But I'm always going to worry about his durability. But I still think he's worth the pick, though. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. Right. And I want him to also go to a franchise that's actually going to take care of him. Yeah. A lot of these no franchises way. they don't build they don't build around a franchise quarterback. Yeah. But then wonder why. Like you know, Andrew Luck. Out. Andrew Luck, saddest story yeah. of recent yeah. NFL. Like why would you wait until the literally the year after he retires and want to get an offensive line? Right. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, that's then they go out and just get Matt Ryan. Like I don't know what's their fetish with old quarterbacks, yeah. old wash quarterbacks. Because they go. was under the impression that their playoff window was still open because of the defense. And I'm like no. The defense ain't been playing the same <laughs> that it was back in 2019. Honestly, not 2019, um, 2020. Honestly, they shouldn't even have got rid of Carson Wentz. They really shouldn't. Have they used him. He was like the scapegoat because yeah, masking all their real issues. Because at the end of the day, they could have made the playoffs. They should have made the playoffs. It was a win and in. Y'all played the Jaguars at the time. Who I think what had one win. Yeah, yeah. yeah they had yeah. one win. Literally, yeah. <laughs> then y'all lose to them. Gave them their second win of the season, the last game of the year, and you don't get in the playoffs. How do you lose that game? Exactly. And then, yeah. you know, they, you just went away from your scheme. You had, like, the number one rushing running back at, at the time, mm-hmm. See, Jonathan Taylor, and was not running the ball. It's that, and it's also defensively. Y'all is good. Y'all supposed to be a playoff type of defense. Mm-hmm. Just so. How do you mm-hmm. – yeah. they're the worst team in the league. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, <laughs> exactly. like, I don't – I'm not Trevor saying, Lawrence like, I understand, like, it's NFL is Sunday. It's any given Sunday. I get that. It's, that's sports. That's always going to be a factor. But it's just, like, how do you – I remember that game. It's like, yo, how do you – how do you give that up? Exactly. You made like you made people like people was like, all right, Trevor Lawrence, like you looking like, yeah, that was the one game. They was like, all right, so he probably ain't a bust. Because, <laughs> right. But then again, like it wasn't his fault, you know. This coaches that he had around him his rookie year, trash. Over exactly. Urban Meyer is my Meyer. guy. Yeah, he's my guy. Uh-huh. He wasn't, and all right, my man's Ritter. He was like, how you think you gonna pan out? Like, he's gonna be fired his first season. Yeah. He yeah. was like, you sure he? he you think he's not going to pan out? Like, hell no. He's yeah, the NFL's not, not the NFL college. Coach. Yeah, you yeah. Can't he's coach, a college coach. You can't coach them grown men like kids. Yeah, you can't do that. And then on top of that, you off the field antics, you're, you're supposed to be the coach. Exactly. You're supposed to be telling them about off the field antics. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you in the media exactly. for off the field antics? <laughs> right, exactly. yeah. So that right there was just, that was a nail in the coffin for him. Honestly, that was a nail in the coffin. So it was like, yeah. Damn. All right, Lee. How you feel? I mean, it's a first round pick, bro. That's like, it's like winning the lottery, damn near. <laughs> it's like winning for losing. <laughs> yeah, we, know, we know, we know. Literally, that's what it is. Yeah. So you know, I mean, I will do whatever. I just need the Ravens to, to figure out franchise tag <laughs> or <bottom> some <laughs> shit. He's not, we no, he's not playing if y'all franchise. I told you that last. Bro, like two I weeks know ago, you bro. said that, but like, we gotta be some shape, bro. <laughs> no, he's, he, he's gonna that's be a New York Jet. I'm telling you, that's. Probably gonna be out. I ain't if he lie. is, that's on the Ravens. This is like, yo, the Ravens ain't got two fifty, bro. <laughs> no, but see, but what yeah, I'm the Browns is, got my boy. What I'm saying, losing is, his mind. They did that wanna, to Deshaun so Watson with mm-hmm. the contract talks. You want to sit there and say, oh well, the, one of the reasons we don't want to give you this money guaranteed is because you get hurt at the end of the season. All right, we'll go back and look at the offensive scheme. Mm-hmm. You got him doing untold numbers of. Quarterback design runs. Mm-hmm. He already scrambles out of side of the pocket whenever shit breaks down. Mm-hmm. You're putting him in harm's way. You don't. I mean, that's how you play, though. That's how you. But listen, you can't say that in contracts. It's right. like you're shooting yourself in your foot, and you're taking, you put, you're putting the gun in someone else's hand, and be like, "Well, why'd you do that?" Mm-hmm. You can't. You can't do that. That's not really. That's a hard. That's not even like logical contract negotiations. Mm-hmm. I'm playing. I'm getting hurt at the end of the season. Because I'm doing so many quarterback designs. Yeah, it's the runs. workload. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he not carries that me. offense. We, you see how, how it operates when he's not yeah. in. <laughs> you see what J.K. Dobbins said. Yeah. We had Lamar, we the one. Yeah, because Lamar would have been out that on that field rushing, snapping the same way you was. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you pay that him that money. Exactly. Too. You got to pay him the you money. You got to pay him the money. You have to. 
If you want him to carry your offense like that, one thing though, let me ask you, you this. Pay. Let me ask you this though. What's up? You know, I've been hearing, I've been seeing a lot of reports. How do you feel about y'all possibly getting DeAndre Hopkins? Nigga, word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Yo, one that's we one need is. a receiver, bro. That's the like. Don't get me wrong. That's our guys the bona fide are good. number one that y'all would need. Guys are good. And the Cardinals our guys are, are decent, but like <laughs> they're they're really like two three. See, maybe yeah. three, four receivers. They're not one. You right. see what I'm saying? Nah. Like y'all have a bona fide stud and my boy Mark Andrews. You know that's Oklahoma Sooner too. Yeah. Yeah. You know that's my boy. I got a bona fide okay. stud in okay. him. Bateman. That's, he, a, that's Bateman definitely. Got out. He's damn near. He's basically our number one receiver. Right. <laughs> but see, what I'm saying is, in the Cardinals, they, like you said, they act. They really want to trade Hopkins. They yeah. want to trade him. Wow. So what I'm saying is, if y'all really are committed to Lamar, go out there and get that. Yeah, he kind of yeah. had to. Even that'll probably, we need that. That'll probably, you know, <laughs> look at him and, you know, ease his mind a little bit instead of trying to get the most money he can get. He'll be like, all right, well, I can make room for someone who's going to help strong. me excel, yeah. come in, mm-hmm. you know, and I'll take what y'all offering because it's not like what they're offering ain't a lot of money. You know, right. I think it was 150 mil. Yeah. Yeah, 150 mil guarantee. That's still a lot of money. It was you still guys a lot of money. Yeah. 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 So it's like, if you leave room for another bona fide star to come in, you know, help you excel, help your game improve. Because mm-hmm. I know for a fact he can pass. Everyone keeps trying to oh, say yeah, he can't he pass. Can pass. He We've can. seen it. I don't know why they do that. Bro. We've seen it. Like, literally. <laughs> bro, look at the color of his skin. That's all. Yeah. Literally. That's what, that's what it is. Might that's be. what it is. <laughs> yeah. It just might be. Like, we know is. for a fact you can pass if need be. But it's like the scheme is so built around you running. Your running backs are running. Yeah, he runs too much. Right. I feel like, see – I grew up with the Ravens run, run, pass. You see what I'm saying? So, like, in my mind, I'm damn near programmed. Like, yo, run the ball, but don't have our quarterback run the ball. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Lamar is good for, like, improvised situations. You yeah. know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Where he's just, like, you know, just like, oh, shit, I got to make some shape. Right. He's great for making some shape. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But, like, to just say, all right, run the ball and do this, it's like he, he can, but th- he's not – Effective like that, right? In my opinion, yeah. it's like nah, you use that like, for your running so back. Yeah, right. <laughs> there's, there's only so much you can get away with. Yeah. Exactly. So and yeah. Lamar, that's a once in a generation talent. Talent, yeah. 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 Like literally, Easy. and I feel like he's the best athlete all around mm-hmm. in the league. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like there's nobody more athletic than him, especially right. the, at the position he plays. Right. Yeah. He could do anything. So it's like I don't only person close is Fields. Mm-hmm. Facts, yeah, yeah. Fields, yeah. We're close. But he's Hurst not he's not Action well. Jackson. I will, well, I I will go out. Hurst is nice. Hurst yeah. is Hurst. nice. But I'm saying in terms of overall, like how you say overall, like like yeah, from top to bottom. Yeah. Hurts is he's mobile, he's athletic. But I'm talking about the way Lamar can take a home run. He can home run that football. Yeah. yeah. That's Fields. Yeah, that's like, Fields. Yes, he can yes. really, and, he, and the crazy part about it is, like I said, he wasn't even like that Ohio State. Nah, he was, he nah, was a he, he's a passer, like, but he got to be like that because yeah. Lamar's trash. Yeah, like, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like he ran more yards. Yeah, but no, nah, action, season. but action really? Jackson, bro. Look at the, yeah. look at the name, Action Jackson, bro. He's him. Man. There's really no one close to him. Literally. He's really yeah. up there. That's right. That's why it's like I don't really, and I know we're probably going off topic. I'm sorry about that, but it's just, <laughs> one thing I seen was um I forgot it was Bart Scott. Mm-hmm. He said, "There's only three superstar quarterbacks." Man, don't. And he said, "Mahomes." Get me started on that. Mahomes. I said, "You got that, Burrow." The case is still out there, but you got that. I gotta give it to you just because he went to the Super Bowl in second season, and all you did was give him the could possibly go back. Yeah. Yeah. And the first season, they probably would have been better if he ain't tears ACL. Exactly. So I give you that. Okay. Okay. But my issue is Josh Josh Allen. Allen. Like, and my thing is. Before you, I'm sorry, because you're probably gonna say what I'm gonna say. But my thing is, okay, he has he he's a prototypical NFL quarterback. He has the big arm. He's basically Ben Roethlisberger 2.0. Outside of that, what has he done? Nothing. What is really what has he done to even be elevated as a superstar quarterback? Right. Because he throws for 4,000 yards and you know over 25 touchdowns. All right, cool. That's kind of like almost getting normal now in today's NFL. Yeah, right. So it's just like, I can't keep patting you on the back for things you honestly should be out there doing. Already. Because your talent is good enough for you to do that. Mm-hmm. But at some point, when is the stats going to match the accolades in the postseason? Right. Because, I'm sorry, the way he played, and he didn't even play bad, but it's just you didn't make no plays that even put your stamp on the game. Mm-hmm. You let Joe Burrow come to your crib in your playoff environment, in it's snow. snowing. Literally. It's snowing. Now, it snows in Cincinnati. Right. 
Right. It yeah. snows in Ohio. It snows in Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's your. That's literally Bill's environment. That's mm-hmm. history textbook. This is lined up for us to go out there and kick their ass. Right. Yeah. And you go out there and get your fucking ass kicked. <laughs> it, what was Spartanburg? Like, Twenty-seven and ten. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like he's been under. Out, so outside of last year, he's really been underperforming in the playoffs. Yeah. He's really. He really has been underperforming in the playoffs. He, he hasn't made. The, they almost lost to Miami. Yeah. So, and yeah, that's because he, he turned due to yeah. turnovers. <laughs> due to turnovers. <laughs> like you lost a coach and now you you turnover machine again. That's right. crazy. Yeah. Because you can't say Dable didn't have an effect on that because look how he got Daniel Jones. Exactly. New York New York Giant fans, they love this nigga now. Right. They love him. <laughs> They're like, sign him, long term deal. That's our quarterback. That's our franchise quarterback. I promise you, just last year, they was like, Why Payton. did we not take Justin Fields in the draft? <laughs> Why did we not draft another quarterback? I hate this guy. Yeah. He can't play. Damn. So you get a coach that comes in, knows what he's doing, mm-hmm. turns that whole ship around. Now it's yep, I'm on board. So that's really all it really be taking. You really got to get the right personnel. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that could be the, the case for Lamar Jackson. Get an offensive minded head coach that's in terms of like being able to revolutionize the offense, make it creative, tailor it yeah. towards passing. But keep the running in it. You got like you got these running backs. Why do you need Lamar to run the ball? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Let him create. First play of the game. Let him create <laughs> when the pocket breaks down. Exactly. The moment you do that, you'll see Lamar start to finish seasons now. Mm-hmm. You don't gotta worry about him getting hurt. Exactly. So it's just like I don't know. I don't know why teams don't like why they won't really do that. But they need to. Yeah, like back to the Bark Scott point. Like I'm not mad. You thought those three are superstars. I'm really not mad. But to add like Lamar. Who, won an MVP, unlike Allen and Burrow, and Hurts, who should win MVP, aren't. It's to act like it's a whole reach to say they're, they're superstars is kind of crazy to me. Right. Like, in, in, in comparison to those three. Like, I'm not mad. If you think that is cool, I'm not tripping. But to act like those two aren't in the conversation, at least it's kind of a reach. Yeah. Especially yeah. Lamar, since he got an MVP. I'm putting Lamar in front. I'm putting uh, Josh Allen. Yeah, at least he won an MVP. We're not going to say, I like winning MVP in the NFL don't matter because it's yeah. hard as shit. Hell yeah. It's hard to win MVP and it's hard to repeat. It's clear. It's clearly the most, it's literally the most valuable player. Like, you see how the Ravens are when, yeah. without Lamar. So yeah. it's like. We felt pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do well without <laughs> so uh, sticking to football. So, if you follow football, you see that during the draft, it's always some random college quarterback that always is. Rises in stock out of the blue when the season is season is over. This year, the example will be Will Levis from Kentucky. Even though they've been talking about Bryce Young and CJ CJ Stroud all year, they're oh, talking yeah. about fuck Ohio State. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're talking they're talking about Levis could possibly go number one or be the first quarterback taken. Mm. So, how do you feel about these white college quarterbacks <laughs> rising in stock in the draft? Out Zach of the blue. Wilson. So I'm gonna say Zach Wilson. <laughs> See, and the crazy part about it is Zach Wilson played better than he played well, better than Will Levis. Yeah, look, look. like he stats was better, played better. He threw like, and this is where I, I kind of get frustrated with like Josh Allen because he. It's like he said, "Fuck Josh Allen." I'm like, it's, Dang, I'm, it's not know, really right at his neck. It's not really <laughs> fuck him. In terms of – this is something that's outside of his control because it's something that's always going to be in the league, whether it's Josh Allen or the next quarterback of that typical fashion that fits the mold of what the NFL always looked at as the product at, uh, quarterback. Like, so Will Levis, what's he, like 6'4"? Yeah. Strong body, strong arm. I've seen some of his throws, like, not with pads on, yeah. And, you know, guys are like, ooh, ah. And it's just like, okay, what about the tape, though? Like, yeah. are we going to watch the tape? Mm. Watch the tape. I watch his tape. I'm like, I don't see what would make me even want to consider him being, like, a third-round pick. I mean, like. I know he has the size, he has yeah. the stature. But it's like, all right, you want to sit You want to sit there and say, oh, well, he's going to be able to pick up an NFL system because he had two NFL uh, coordinators as his offense coordinator at Kentucky. Okay. Kentucky ain't do shit. 
Exactly. <laughs> like, for real. <laughs> like, I understand, like, it's Kentucky. It's not, like, the, a top-tier program in the SEC. But at the same time, it's just, like, there's talent at Kentucky. Yeah, there is. There's <laughs> players at Kentucky that can transfer to other schools, and they'd be starting. Yeah, shit. The so, it's, like, it's not, it's not like there's not talent at Kentucky. Yeah. And then in those two seasons that he started, he underperformed. Yeah. Like, so it's just, like, I don't – maybe he could be a rare situation where he'll do better – in the NFL than mm-hmm. he does in college, I just can't see it. Because if he gets drafted first round, nine times out of ten, his best fit would be somewhere we can sit and learn. Mm-hmm. He can't start. No. There's only two quarterbacks I even think can start, and I still feel like they should sit for a year, and that's Bryce Young and Stroud. Mm-hmm. I feel like they need to sit and just learn a system mm-hmm. in the NFL. But to say he's like he could be like the first taken – the first quarterback taken, that's that's weird to me. I mean, I know CJ's for sure playing. He ain't he ain't zip. Yeah, he's not. Whatever dead. team he goes to, he's playing automatically. Yeah, just cause there ain't gonna be no team that's gonna draft him just for him to back up. Mm-hmm. Like there's a, a Bryce Young, you know, you might wanna, you know, be cautious with him because like I said, like I said with the frame, but Strauss. Yeah, Strauss can start now. Yeah, he's ready. Yeah, in my eyes, I feel like he's ready. Yeah. He might have, you know, rookie mistakes and stuff like that, but that's just part of learning. And plus, like, and plus, they go, he he gonna get drafted to a weak team anyway, so it's not like it, no, no, no. So it's yeah, so not like, a must win the next season anyway. Just going off yeah. of what the mock say, the mock say he could possibly either go to Panthers, he could go to Colts. Um, I seen they uh they had through uh, Las Vegas in there as well, but yeah. I feel like Las Vegas isn't gonna draft a quarterback. They're gonna probably get a quarterback in free agency. So Aaron Rodgers might that might be a landing. Spot for him, yeah. you know. It's gonna be a couple of quarterbacks on the move, so I feel like that could be a landing spot possibly for him. Yeah, I already know he ain't coming back to Green Bay. He hates it now. No, oh, yeah, yeah. If I love the fans, he gave them one more year just to see what would happen, and then they don't even make the playoffs. He's yeah. like, yeah, I'm definitely leaving. Yeah. Even the last game of the season, he went to uh, one of the Lions players asked for his jersey. He was like, Nah, I need this. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Yeah, this is my. This is gonna be the last time I've actually played in this jersey, so I actually need this. I mean, I'm not mad if he's the third quarterback taken. To be honest, he's, like, yeah, he's not. He's not. He, he's not trash. Like I seen him, but like I seen him play because he's an SEC. I'm a sort of fan. But like, I just the, to to reach and get him number one over Stroud. And yeah, that's yeah. Young that's after crazy. after you saw them in a college football playoff, <laughs> it's it like. Oh, uh, <laughs> like I I look at him and Anthony Richardson said the same. Like I just feel like see, and that's like, I was going to say that. Like, like how they not in the same now? All right, so you want to give him a slight edge? He had an extra season. He had one more season yeah. than Richardson. But how do you not both consider projects? I mean, yeah, because like Richardson, like he'll have a game where it's like, oh, he's a top ten quarterback in the draft next year. The very next game, it, it's just like, yo, how the fuck did you get a scholarship to play football, <laughs> nigga? No, like, like no, no, like, like, no, like, no bullshit. It's yeah, just like, like, seriously, yo, like, you, this is the product you put on the field. Like, you, you, you start for Florida. It, it, Don't exactly. get me wrong, we not all that, but the history you start for Florida. Right. right. I ain't gonna lie. He's the reason I even watched a couple of y'all games. I wanted to see how you like how you play. Yo, I forgot like, who who did y'all play? Was it LSU or was it Tennessee? It was Tennessee. I think yeah. it was Tennessee. It was yo, that was a fun game. It was back and forth with oh, high yeah. scoring. But I'm sitting there and I'm like, all right, he's a project, but he I see like he has the tools. Yeah. He has he has the arm, he has the athleticism, like mobility, all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right, I'm you know, it's early in the season, so I'm like, I, I like how I like things gonna look for Florida. Then I watch him another game, I think it might even South Carolina. I'm sitting there, I'm like, Nigga. yo, what are you doing? Exactly. And like, they was, <laughs> and they was comparing that man to Cam Newton. In college, yeah, like okay. yeah, they've been comparing was. Josh no, Allen really to Cam was. Newton too. <laughs> nah, and I hate that because wow. Cam was really him. I don't exactly. Listen, I'm not on the Josh, the Josh Allen hype train. <laughs> I mean, I'll fuck with Josh Allen, <laughs> I'm but not, like, I'm not. You gotta do something at this point yeah. for the way it's Yo. because I don't like players being talked about to a certain extent, and it's just like okay, we're all like you're all dick riding, mm-hmm. which is cool. The talent is there. I see it. He, he produces on the field in the regular season. Mm-hmm. At this point in his career, it's not about the regular season. You getting 12-plus wins, you're supposed to be doing that. Mm-hmm. You got a team that's built to do that. You got a head coach that's built for you to do that. When are you going to take that next leap? Because we had these same talks about Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And when they're still going on. Mm-hmm. Right. Is he going to produce in the postseason? Oh, he only has one postseason win. Okay, well, Josh Allen, he still has yet to even get past a divisional round. Exactly. So why are we – how is he a superstar? He's getting bounced in divisional rounds at home games. Exactly. So why are we just – why did we just christen him to be a Wait, top Wait, I thought three? they did make the conference championship that one year. Which year was that? Against Mah- the year Mahomes won the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, they did. Wasn't they did? It? Was, okay, so – all right, so one appearance and a loss. And then with the exception of, you know, that's why they changed the whole overtime rule. Like, they didn't get a chance to get the ball. <laughs> no, wait, hold on. If we're talking about that year. That was the divisional round. Yeah, yeah that was the divisional the next round, he went and faced Burrow, and Burrow beat him, Mahomes. Yeah. So, it's like, mm-hmm. with the exception of that, I felt as though, if they would have probably got the ball back, I felt as though they, they could have beat Kansas City. Because Kansas City was in their ass before, yeah. you know, they start, <laughs> they start climbing back. Then they just, boom. Yeah. They score first drive, game over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why yeah. they changed that rule specifically for the Bills. Yeah. Because it was yeah. kind of like. It wasn't. It was. It was kind of messed up because it's like, damn, that game was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And who's to say they wouldn't have got the ball back and scored again? Yeah, they could have. I, like, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. That shit's fucked up. I I hated that change. Yeah. My yeah. thing is like, yo, that's football. Cause like that's yeah. where your defense is exactly. supposed to show up. Right. <laughs> right. All right. But like, like, oh, well, let's get another team a chance. Fuck their chance. Yeah. Your right. chance they had chances. They already had. Chances. Chances. Like, yeah. <laughs> but like, but that's it's just like, again, it's not that I hate Josh Allen. It's just. We hold all these other quarterbacks to certain standards, and we move the goalposts when they do certain things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But when it's other these other quarterbacks, Yo. they would just we just sit there and accept whatever they do, and then if they don't produce the way we think they're gonna produce, mm-hmm. we sit there and be like, oh well, you know, Cincinnati really had a really good defense. Da da da. The uh, the Bills' passing defense was ranked 27th in the league. Where was all that before the talk? Exactly. Like, where was all that before this game started? Yeah. Where was all that talk? Now y'all talking about it now. Nah, hell, hold them to the standard. They didn't win, he didn't win. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, I just I like to hold these quarterbacks to the same standard as if we'd have held them, like Jalen Hurts, mm-hmm. if it was Justin Fields, mm-hmm. if it was Lamar Jackson for sure, because I've seen him literally get crucified. Yeah, you see the pattern, though, with the, those three quarterbacks. Right? Yeah, you see it. You see the pattern, right? You see it. <laughs> you see the pattern, right? Yeah. <laughs> Like, so my boy Jalen Hurts, he ain't going MVP. I know it just because I know they're going to the D ride. They're going to they're going to D ride him, but like that offensive player of the year, that has to go to Hurts. Yeah. Has to. Has to. You got to give him that at least. Mm-hmm. He's like you know, come on, second mm-hmm. team All Pro, first quarterback from that draft that involves Herbert, Justin Herbert, that involves uh, Joe Burrow, first quarterback out of that draft to be on an All Pro team. <laughs> got to give him that offensive player of the year. Got to. Yeah. So, Lee, how do you feel about these white college quarterbacks? I ain't going to lie. I'm not really that much into college, clearly, like y'all are. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just, no, it's not. I just not into it like that. But, I mean, I think we know why. <laughs> <laughs> I think we know why. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's the best thing I can say to that. Because y'all, y'all touched every point, seriously. Like, yeah, that's all I can say to that. All right. So, moving on to a non-sports topic. So, to the sports, so the non-sports fans, <laughs> right? You can turn the pod back on now. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, um, how do you want to talk about all this role reversal that's going on in the world right now? Why? I feel like that's that right there is like a topic that a lot of people don't touch up on enough because we're too busy trying to be each other. We're too busy not understanding each other. Too busy hating each other. And I feel like, especially within the black community, it's like elevated a little bit more just because like it's like entertainment for every other race Mm -hmm. to see us tear each other down to Mm -hmm. see us constantly bicker about what the other side isn't doing what the other side does that we don't like more so compared to just trying to understand why we are this way because we mirror each other you know men do a lot of things because of women women do a lot of things because of men you Mm -hmm. know it's all about you know the law of attraction so it's just like we're doing these things because a lot of times women have made it clear that this is the type of guy you want. So it's like when that guy is stepping out of his comfort zone or he's, you know, not staying true to himself, he's trying to become this person and give this image that you say is the perfect image for you. Mm. Well, why are you complaining? Like, you know, a lot of that stuff tends to mutate into a lot of things we don't want it to be. We tend to create versions of people we don't want. So it's like, why is it that Instead of it just, you know, we just trying to learn each other more, like how every other race does, you know. I don't know what it is with us, 
<laughs> but I wish it was just more so like we could just actually sit down and love each other, you know. Yeah. And now, like I said, with the whole role reversal, it's like, you know, a lot of men are trying to be like women, you know, in terms of this, like their desires, you know, what it is they want, you know. It's a lot of men out here complaining too much. It's a lot of men <laughs> out here, you know, bitching too much. Yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. And then on the other side for the women, you know, it's a lot of women out here, you know, not being women. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of women out here being a little bit too manly. You know, yeah. trying to shut their feelings off, trying to act like dudes, you know, you know, trying to dog walk motherfuckers and shit, like kind of how like dudes do, um, unfortunately. Yeah. And then, like I say, also with and not even just like strictly gender, you know, you got age groups too. You got kids trying to be adults. Fucks. You got these young kids out here thinking they need to keep up with adults. You know, it's, I'm so glad I ain't in school nowadays. <laughs> high school, you know how stressful it'd be yeah. to be in high school and just feeling as though, damn, I need to have that Dior, I need to have that that Burberry, I need to have that Louis Vuitton. Shit, bro, like, bro, you, you are in ninth grade, class, like, right? You got your students, you got your classmates fighting the teacher, right? So, like, like yo, you are in ninth grade. Like, yo, relax. <laughs> yeah, like, you in ninth grade? You try? You want me to spend thousands of dollars on one item exactly. for you to wear to to who you trying to keep up with? But that's like the persona, you know. That's the you know that's what's in. Oh, yeah. That's what these celebrities do. That's what, you know, that's what the adults are doing. You know, kudos to people that have, you know, the financial gain to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. I ain't knocking nobody hustle. I ain't knock, I ain't counting nobody pockets. Yeah. But it's just like, you know, when we prioritize that and make it more important than what it is, you know, that's influencing these kids to, you know, follow that same uh, train of thought. So it's like, why is it that? Bro, spitting right now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, why is it that? We value that so much. And then, you know, that also goes into, like, how I was saying, you know, adults, shit, there's times where I wish I was still a kid. Like, mm -hmm. I don't act like a kid, but, like, you know, I may have my moments where, you know, everybody has their moments where they're being childish or whatever the case may be. But, like, you know, as adults, we need to start standing on that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an everyday thing. Like, our kid years are over. You know, a lot of adults, they need to start acting more like men, you know, stop having temper, men and women. Like, start with the temper tantrum. Start with the, you know, handling things the way a child would, yeah. you know. Find you real solutions to these right. problems. Right, real yeah. resolutions. Yeah. Not always talking about the problems. Let's talk about resolutions. Let's talk yeah. about how can we resolve everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's also talk about, like, how... I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but let's... um, It'll come back to me. All right. But, like... <laughs> oh, wait, all right, okay. So let's also talk about, like, how, you know, how it is nowadays... Where it's like a lot of people, they try to avoid conflict or, you know, they're not too confrontational. So they just, they rather go on mute or they rather just run away from the issue. Mm -hmm. It's like things don't get solved like that. So now you, cause you, now you got the other side thinking like, oh, you know, you either just canceling me out. You know, you trying to, you know, gaslighting. There's a lot of gaslighting going on too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like accountability. That's very important as well as adults. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like. We got to start taking more accountability for what it is we do and how we move forward from the things we do. Because not everything we do is right. Not everything we do is good. Mm -hmm. And I felt as though, like, a lot of times it's a lot of pride involved on both sides. You know, a lot of women don't like being wrong. Men don't like being wrong. Mm -hmm. But it's like, how do we grow if both sides don't want to be wrong? So we keep doing wrong shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then now it's it's a weird now to the point where it's like, you know, a lot of motherfuckers are trying to outdo each other in the wrong shit, in the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm going to get you before you get me, basically, you know? Mm -hmm. So now it's like, this just like a, a messed up mentality to have, especially for our generation. Our generation, we're going to make or break the world. Yeah. How I feel like, just because the direction in which the world is going, like the dynamic of how everything is, mm -hmm. like, we're the 90s babies. So it's like, we're going to make or break the world, you know? Mm -hmm. We've lived through four different generations. Mm. I mean, four different uh, decades yeah. before our 30th birthday, 90s, the the thousands, the 2010s, the 2020s. Mm -hmm. A lot of us ain't even 30 yet. We've done lived through four different decades. You know, we created the social media shit. era. Decades. Right. Yeah. Seen a whole bunch of different yeah, I things. Didn't think about it like that. Right. Yeah, that's like we, <laughs> we, we created the social media era. You know, that's us. Like that's yeah. like we are the epitome of that era, you know. So it's like we got to start. Cleaning up. Yeah, we got to start cleaning up. It was because, fun. It was fun, but then shit went left, and we just allowed it to keep going left. 
Right. And now Literally. we're at a point where it's like, all right, I know everyone's starting to realize like this shit is like not it's even not toxic. Control. It just look you look at it and you're like, the fuck? Like it's so many times I'm on Twitter, I see like scrolling on my timeline, I'm seeing shit, I'm just like the only reason I even still log on this bitch is because it's funny. <laughs> but there's just so much diabolical, toxic shit that's just on it. And now it's not even just Twitter. It's, it's either Facebook, it's Snapchat, Instagram. Yeah. It's just like, it's just toxic shit and sex. <laughs> all over the place. Legit, all over the place. Don't check my story. Check yeah. my story on Facebook. Like, when did this become exactly? Yeah. Like, no, like, <laughs> right now, how you got to do this? No, like, yo, you, you ever see like on Facebook where it's like you see a lot of uh you know like these I don't know if they're like porn pages or what, right? But like they bots. they're That's telling people they to they check bots. their stories. Okay, okay. And when okay. you check the stories, it's a whole bunch some of sexual shit. content. Yeah. It's either some sexual content that's you know some good shit or it's some wild. <laughs> Just disgusting shit. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what and the then, fuck then it's like, this? just like you know, curiosity kills. I tell this, I tell people this all the time. Mm-hmm. Like me, I don't be sold on shit like that. If I see, I'll scroll past it. Like some, you know, there's some I check. I ain't gonna say I make it seem like I'm just, <laughs> yeah, I'm just right, completely right, right. blind to it. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, just going off of what people like when they share it and when they like discuss it, you can just kind of tell what it already is because people mm-hmm. are already in the comments saying what yeah. it is. Right. I'm like. What is going on with that? <laughs> like, yeah. what's going on with that? Nah, when did that become a thing? Like, right. Like, and like, then all these restrictions on Facebook, man. All these restrictions. Mark, talking to you. <laughs> all these restrictions. I don't know what's going on. It's like Facebook is so censored now. Yeah, I ain't going to Mark. He talking to you. I'm still on there. Bro. Yeah. You <laughs> can't do or say anything. I'll say anything on that. Bitch. I've been restricted like three times. 30 month someone, bids. I already called someone never, racist, man. For <laughs> saying nothing. Literally. So wait, this face, that Facebook jail shit, that's really real. Yeah, yeah. yeah they be, yeah. <laughs> like, in it currently. Like, it's right now. <laughs> I got Ew. six days left. <laughs> but I'm like, damn. Yeah. Even when you appeal it, I don't know who is behind that. I don't know who is doing the appeals. Yeah, I don't know who's you. overviewing the stuff. I'm surprised they didn't get my ass yet. But it's like, it got to be somebody old, like senile old. Because it's like, <laughs> yo, they don't understand <laughs> nothing. Nah, they, understand they don't understand exactly nothing that's said. going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to tear that ass. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh, 30 that's, days. That's extremely too sexy. And then they're not even like you labeling it. story popping pussy. Like. Exactly. <laughs> like, they're not even <laughs> labeling it. Nigga? <laughs> right. Oh, they're not even labeling it as, you know, sexual continuity, nothing. They're n- labeling it as violence. Yeah, he's, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I'm like, no. what? Yo. How is this violent? Yeah. I, I just tell whoever is behind it ain't getting no ass. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm not. I mean, I just felt like with the with the role reversal or whatever. I just think people just gotta be themselves for real. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think you should change up for anybody. For shit. Yes. Yeah, right. <laughs> nah, and I just think like That's relationships real. work better in that way. Like, if you're gonna be more masculine for a guy for a woman, or be more feminine if you're a guy for a, a woman. Or Whatever y'all know what I mean, right. but um, yeah, like yeah, that's like, fucking yeah, like why if that's not you, right. just right. to be just to be petty and go tit for tat with the other person, exactly, right? Yeah. Or just or not even that to try and get the situation to work, exactly. And it's like nah, like if there's friction there, then that's not that's not your situation. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like you cool off that. Mm-hmm. That's not that's not you, bro. So it's like don't a lot of people, a lot of adults, and honestly. We, me and me, me and him, been through that. We've been through it. We're not necessarily that we try to change ourselves for a situation, but more so we try to adapt to it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, nah, I know this ain't gonna work, but I'm still trying to make it work. Though. All right, trying to just, com- trying to compromise. Yeah, yeah, like, cause I like, no matter what it is, situation like if it's relationship, marriage, there's always gonna be some form of compromise mm-hmm. on either side. Yeah, that's how I feel like, from what I've observed being. On this earth, twenty-seven years. Damn. That's how you. That's how you function. That's how you maintain a marriage. That's how mm-hmm. you maintain a relationship. Y'all go and fight. There's gonna be fights. There's gonna be arguments. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? As long as it's not like infidelity, you gotta get past that. Like you just gotta talk it out, get past that. Infidelity is one situation where it's like, all right, cool, I understand. Like, cause that can really fuck up someone's trust. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People don't un- people say like, "Oh, 
trust this, trust that. But when they're talking about their own trust. Mm-hmm. But when it's come to someone else's trust, they don't hold it as high as, as much as they hold their trust. Same way they don't hold someone else's feelings as high as they hold their own. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's why it's like, the minute people start to value someone's trust is the minute you'll see a lot more of compromise in terms of good compromise. Mm-hmm. You won't see as much infidelity. You won't see as much going behind people's backs and shit like that. Yeah, because right. it's like, yo, even if it crosses your mind, it's like, yo, why would I do that? Like, that would really mm-hmm. fuck, fuck someone so that would really fuck them up. I ain't trying to do them like that. Mm-hmm. But it just comes down to maturity. It's like, at the end of the day, it's like, you're going to have your fun. You're going, you know, even when you're 18, 21, 24, all that, you're going to do what you do. But it's like, are you learning along the way? Exactly. Like, are you learning from your past situations? Like, all right, I can't be like that with the next situation. Right. Because right. not you, everything is meant to, you know, last forever. Yeah, no. Nah. If you do find an everlasting situation, that's cool. I feel like a lot of the times, a lot of people are very too codependent on each other. So that's yep. giving them a reason to, you know, try and stick through it. And even if they're not even happy, you know, they'll just try and find other desires while still being in whatever situation, relationship they're in because they're too codependent on the other person. Right. You know, a lot of, you know, it's a lot of situations where it's like a lot of these guys, you know, I, and I mainly say guys just because like where we from, we see a lot of this play out more than the other side of the coin. Mm-hmm. So it's like a lot of guys, you know, they're codependent on their girls. You know, they need their girls, a place to live, you know car to drive, food to eat. You know, a lot of guys ain't really out here standing on what they need to stand on as men. So that's like I say, going back to the real reversal, going back to, like I said, men trying to be women, you know. A lot of these men, you know, they're too okay with a woman taking care of them 100%, you know, in terms of every field financially, emotionally. It's like you can't allow a woman to burn herself out like, Wearing the pants in a relationship, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, at what point are you going to sit there and, you know, take some, like, take a good look in the mirror and just be like, damn, you know, have that self-realization with yourself where it's like, wow. Yeah, right, I got to do better. Not even just for her, but for myself. Yeah, right. Because, so, if it's yeah, that's true. Right. worth yeah. it for my relationship. Right. And then a lot of these women, I feel like, you know, it's, it's a pro and a con. It's a blessing and a curse how they're so willing to stick through it. <laughs> but, like... A lot, you know, we got a lot of damaged goods out here. So it's like a lot of these women, they stick through the wrong situations too much that they don't know how to accept when a good one comes across. You know, they don't know yeah. how to accept. They don't know what a good man looks like. Yeah. They just fantasize of what they think a good man is. Mm-hmm. So it's like, but when you see a lot of it, you know, a lot of a lot of these women are very aggressive, you know. You know, they got built up anger. So when they're talking about their desires, you know, it's like, they're so strict with it. Mm-hmm. Like you gotta be this, or you, or no, no talking whatsoever, or you gotta pay for my time. It's like, why has money become like, yeah, such yeah, a, you know, a, a deal breaker? Yeah, like I understand not wanting nobody broke. Big I get facts. that. That's 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 Big. facts. Because as a man, I wouldn't want a, a completely broke woman. Like I'm not saying you gotta have more money than me, but like. If you ain't got nothing going on, no motion no whatsoever. Motion, no motion. Yeah, I don't like where are we That's gonna be weird. able to work. I'm trying to build with somebody. I'm not trying to, you know, we too constantly be just watering you yeah. and I'm not getting no benefit out of it. Real time. You know, yeah. like I wanna water each other, I wanna be able to grow with each other. Yeah. But like a lot of women, they I get it, but to an extent it's like you are just gonna hold yourself back from actually finding something that's worth good. Yeah. Because a lot of men, you know, and then you know, they try to scold you when you don't wanna be that man they want you to be in terms of money. Like, I don't wanna pay for a woman's love. I don't wanna pay for a woman's attention. <laughs> but then they'll scold you, gaslight you, mm-hmm. and then call you broke. Oh, da, 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 you this. You damn that. right I'm broke. And it's like, well shit, if I'm broke, <laughs> if that's what makes me broke, damn right. so be it. I'm broke as hell. Facts. Stay but it's there. like, yeah, I'm stay up. over there. But it's just yeah. like I'll be broke paying these bills. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like Pay these bills, man. Damn, it's what just it's like a lose lose on both sides. Yeah, yeah. I That's think why. overall it's definitely that social media. Yes, and social yeah. media definitely social plays media a huge role in that. Because I, like, with everything that we're talking about overall, people look at what they would like to see within themselves. You see what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. you know, on social media, it's kind of easy to weed into that. Right. Yeah. And so because we have it so accessible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Not re- really weeding away, are you? Right. You know what I mean? So 
I feel like that's really what it is for yeah. a lot of times. As far as like yeah. the relationships and just men, just, men just period, just gotta step it up. I mean, we've been fucking up for a long time before right. we were even born. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right, it's and a, a lot it's of just us, something I feel like is. we just gotta recognize it. Is like okay. Yeah, the game fucked up out here. We got yeah, shit, shit right. and just mold the next generation and hope. And that's right. why I hate when like, I hate when I see women that say they want like an old school love, and it's just like, no, that's not, bro. That's not, like, you looking at romance in a time period, and it's like it wasn't that. Nah. Yeah. Yo, your granddaddy was cheating on your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, oh, much. Shit. It, no, that's no. facts. Talk about it's, the real problems. Yeah. Like, <laughs> why do you think the song? Why do you think the song "Daddy Was a Rolling Stone"? Yeah, uh, was, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. It, it's been like that for a while, and that's why I agree with you. You said, like, men, we got to step it up. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like, yo, the situations where it's like, stop catapulting yourself into situations you're not ready for. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, why are you creating a family when you ain't ready to take care of a family? Right. Why are you being with a woman knowing this is her situation and you wasn't ready? You knew in your heart you wasn't ready to take care of that. You wasn't ready to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Why would you? Everything comes back to accountability. Yeah. On both parties. That's true. Stop doing that if you know that's not you. If or at least if you know at this point in time that's not you. Right. So why are you that's like all right, me like twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen. Then wanna be in a relationship. Mm-hmm. Why the fuck would I put myself in a relationship? Mm-hmm. Right. Like I'm not gonna sit there and just be going after girl after girl trying to date them. I know that's not what I want. That's not the type of time I'm on. Right. right. So I'm just gonna save myself the time. I'm gonna save their, them the time mm-hmm. and the drama. And tell them, when I slot in ADMs, this is what it is. Right. And if you don't like that, that's cool. You can dub me, or we can be friends. It, it doesn't matter. Right. My point is, stop setting things up. You know that's not the route you want to go. Exactly. Right. So that's why I agree with what you said. Men, we, like, we do need to step it up. And sure. also stop being enablers, Yeah. both men and women. Stop enabling mm-hmm. people to manipulate you. Stop enabling people to step over you, dog walk you. It's it's easier said than done, but once you actually, you know, have that realization with yourself where it's like, damn, I'm enabling, like, because a lot of the times women do be enabling these men to be bums. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because regardless of what they do, they're going to still be taken care of. You're going to still let them in the house. You know, they're going to still be fucking on you. Mm-hmm. you still, they still going to be asking to borrow your car to drive around and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, no motion, no, no gas, no <laughs> nothing, you know. So it's like you enable this because you feel as though like I don't know a lot, a lot of women they have like it's like like the, the mentality that goes into it. A lot of women they like being you know they like when their men are codependent on them. Right. But the process is way worse. Like because it's not just all right he depends on you. All right, you're getting something out of it. A lot of times, you're not getting nothing positive out of it. So it's just like, stop enabling these men to feel as though they could just sit on their ass and not do nothing. Right. Yeah. If you want to be a stay at home dad, this shit, that's different. <laughs> this shit. At least be a good dad. A lot of these motherfuckers don't yeah. even be good dads. At least do that. All right. At least be a good Man, dad. If you're going to be at the crib doing nothing, do something good, bitch. Right. Yeah, for real. At least, yeah. <laughs> Dude, how something. You, how you gonna be like? Cause how you gonna be sitting there getting taken care of and you ain't shit? Exactly. Like, like yo, that is listen. And the bare minimum is not enough. I don't even think men and women. That. Literally, <laughs> I don't even think future would condone that. <laughs> and I'm not saying what would future say? approval, but I feel like he'd be like, damn, you a bum ass nigga. Cause you ain't gonna at least do good by the bitch, like right, you're taking care right, of you. Like right. she reason there's food that you eating right now. Like, yeah, like damn, cause you gonna go out there and really just do it like that? Nah, you acting crazy. Yeah. So. Take your ass. Use. <laughs> so, uh, last topic is another uh, topic Haji brought to us. Uh, he asked, "Would you date a girl out of her whole face?" I'm gonna just start. Yes. Off. I'm gonna say yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I don't care about a girl's past at all, as long as she ain't doing what she did then in a relationship. I don't. Oh, yeah. I don't care. I'd rather you be out of your whole face than to not ever experienced it. Oh. Just due to the simple fact that I've seen both sides of the coin. I've seen how girls who have never had a whole phase act when they're in a relationship. And I've seen how girls who have already had their whole phase got it out the way. I've seen how they've, act, have, how they've acted in relationships. Mm-hmm. And one thing for sure I can say, that girl who didn't have that whole phase, she going to have it during that relationship. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> she might have it during that relationship. Now, I ain't going to sit here and, you know, be naive. Because, you know. 
a lot of people are naive nowadays. I'm not going to I'm not going to be that person, you know, not everybody is destined to do you wrong. Not everybody is not, not every relationship is destined to have some infidelity in it. Right. But like just from my experiences and just going off of what this particular woman has told me, it's just like, you know, her like prior to the relationship that, that she's in, she's only been with one person. Mm-hmm. So it's like, mm, they got together when they was young. You know, they're sitting there, you know, a lot of things, you know, they look at that like, oh, you know, high school sweetheart, you know, happily ever after. It ain't going to be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> because when that girl get older, you know, you start becoming different people. You're not the same people that you were when y'all first came together. Mm-hmm. Right. So, like, throughout the course of the relationship, you start growing, you start becoming a different person. So, like, you know, and I, like I said before, curiosity kills. You know, a lot of women, women, oh, well, men, men too, but, like, you know, when a I always say this, and like I get hassled for it sometimes, but like a woman cheating psychologically does way more damage than what a man does. Yeah, I, me doubt. personally, I feel like it. Yeah. Like they both do a significant amount of damage, yes. But like I feel like a because good man who ain't who's who isn't out here, you know, being on some slime shit behind his girl back. Mm-hmm. A woman cheating on him, he get cheated on. That hurts because yeah, as a man, different. right, we are taught so many things. We are taught to deal with whatever life throws at us yeah. with no real, you know, process in terms of healing from it. We're just taught to take Yo, it on the chin, charge it to the game. Just yeah. move be forward. A man. Right, Don't be a man. That no. shit hurts. <laughs> 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 get shot right in the back. Fuck, you ain't going to the hospital. Yeah. Dig the bullet out. Like, what? <laughs> See, but the thing about it is going back to what you said, it's just like it hurts more for a man because – that's not on our mind. Right. When women women will really, and this is what I'm saying, if you're not built for that situation to go into it, women will go into a situation with a guy, no, all right, he hasn't done anything yet. He, he might cheat on you. Right. Because that's and just how they swear when yeah. he actually does cheat, they was like, oh, it was my woman's intuition. I was right this whole time. No. You already had the idea that, yeah, he's going to cheat on me. All right. So but from, from that point on, you just was waiting for it. So you know you, in a way you wasn't right. You just already programmed yourself to think, yeah, he's gonna cheat on me. All right, and I ain't no scientist, but like this is somewhat <laughs> proven. But like just going off, just like a, from a biological standpoint, like women, the way their brains are wired, their brains are way more active. I think like four times more active as a man's brain, like a man's brain. Mm-hmm. So it's like the wavelengths that they experience, like with their, like they they could be thinking about multiple things yeah. in a split second. That's yeah. just women. You know, a lot of men. You know, when we get comfortable, we comfortable. I ain't thinking about my girl cheating unless someone come to me and be like, yo, I saw your girl Facts. doing this. <laughs> yeah. I saw your girl doing that. Fuck like, what? <laughs> right. You know, you don't, you don't ever think, you don't ever think that, especially if she's, you know, present herself as the ideal woman, as the ideal, like, com- like companion. You're not thinking none, nothing yeah. like that. A right. woman, like I say, you, a woman's always going to have that in the back yeah. of her mind, regardless of how good you are, just due to the simple fact that that's literally just how their brains are wired. Yeah. Like, yeah. their brains are way more active than what our brains are so it's like we're not gonna worry about they're way more emotional you know they're way more spiritual they're way more you know Mm -hmm. yeah they're way more in tune with themselves at times you know a lot of women you know they be way more in tune with themselves than what men are so it's like when you sit there and when you sit there and you think like damn my girl best thing for me you sit there and then you hear that story you know that i don't want to (laughs) know Yeah. <laughs> That's why I say like, it just it hurts more because it's like damn I'm really out here stepping on everything I need to as a man as a boyfriend as a whatever husband mm-hmm. whatever in case you may call it. That's why it's like going back to my initial point. I rather just have a girl who has experienced the repercussions. Not everybody's perfect, so I'm not sitting here saying that. Oh, like if you cheated before, I won't even sit there and say like that's out of question at all. Because you know I'm I'm a realist, so it's like yeah, it's gonna be making me keep my eye on you more. Mm-hmm. But like I say, everything is situational. Like right. time period matters. You know, the situation you was in matters. Who you were at the time. Everything matters. Everything is situational. So it's like, I just feel as though like a woman who hasn't had her whole face is going to start getting curious. She's going to start looking at other. This is what this particular female has told me herself. She says she's been looking at other guys. She's been thinking other guys have been more attractive. She's been. You know, subtly flirting because it's like, you know, not like flirting because like she said her said her man, perfect. You know, her man worships the ground she walks on. Mm-hmm. And it's like it's unfortunate like that, even doing that sometimes may not be enough for someone who's curious, who lets their curiosity overpower them. Yeah. 
But like that's why it's like me just going saying all that. I'd rather a woman already know what, what you want. Yeah, get there. all that yeah. shit out. <laughs> and you know, just from an environment standpoint, you know, it's kind of hard to necessarily date a quote unquote whore ho that's from the same city as you because she may know like you you may know a lot of people she's been with. Mm-hmm. So like for your own sanity, if you go and go and get a whore. Go get a whore that's not from your town. Yeah, go out of town. <laughs> yeah, go, go go get a whore that's yeah, from out of the city somewhere. somewhere yeah. You know, <laughs> like some you know somewhere where it's just like, all right, well I don't know nobody you've been with, and vice versa because shit, a lot man, a lot of men we whores too. Yeah. So it's like we can't. Man, we started this shit, right? <laughs> they just following <laughs> up. <laughs> what do you mean? Like we, we and it's like, like it's fucked up that there is double standards. Uh-huh. It's fucked up. Like to an extent, I understand those double standards, but it's like I, only reason why I say that is because like. I hold women at a higher pedestal. Mm-hmm. Like I don't exactly. want a, I don't I don't want a woman to be like how I am. Not saying I'm a complete dog. I've had my days, but it's like I don't want a woman to be how I was. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want my woman to be with as many people as me. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want my woman like you know, you hold your woman to a higher standard. You hold her to a higher pedestal. Right. You know, I ain't going to scold you for, you know, not having the ideal number of partners or whatever the case may be. Like, right. everything is situational. But, like, to sit here and act like the double standard doesn't exist, that's just being oblivious. Yeah. Cause it's, it's clearly there. We experience it every day. Right. But, like, I feel like they look at it as a negative too much. Like, be yourself. Like, like how Dev said in the beginning, just be yourself. Mm-hmm. You want to go out and be a horror. What would The weekend say on Remember You? The song with him and Wiz Khalifa. Oh, uh, um, shit. He said, girl, take pride in what you want to yeah, do. Take pride Even if that means a new man every night inside of you. Like, that's facts. <laughs> take pride in it. Like, yeah, don't be, don't you know, it. if that's what you want to do. Real talk, that's what you want. Right, if that's what you want to do, by and all means. you come my way, I don't act like some saint now. Right, I respect the honor. Don't act like some saint, Damn, yo. I the same way you was throwing that ass for them, throw that ass for me. I respect on, the bro. honest Yo, like, No, seriously. <laughs> That's like, fine. Listen, it's just like how I said. Like, listen, we had our dates. Like, like I was single. This nigga. Like, we had our, our time. It's just like, we've experienced that. You was a hoe for this nigga. Be a hoe for me, too. Why you want me to cuff you? No. <laughs> why, you talk, why you coming to me talking about you want me to cuff? Absolutely fucking not. Or you trying to make me jump through hoops and shit like I'm. Yeah, some, nah, don't make me. Like, don't like make it, me. Like it's a, like, like, yeah, like it's a you, circus. Like it's a talent yeah. show. Yeah, I, I can name that. that situation. I can name three niggas in this room. You fucked right now. Don't make me work hey. for this. Yo, not, damn. Yo, yo, don't, yo, nah, don't make me work. Yo. Yo. I'm not doing it, bro. Yo, I'm right. not, not doing working it. for it. I'm not. That's why it's like yeah. I shouldn't even know three people to be fucked. I shouldn't even know one. The fact that I do, come on, bro. Be for be for real with yourself. So, all right, all right, how you would you date a girl out of her whole face if you were single? Facts, huge on that. <laughs> but, I mean, yes, yes, we got some faithful black men in here. Real talk, but uh, at our age, I feel like that shit really don't matter. Like it's all yeah. about maturity at this point. Like, Facts. amen. If you out of it, then I mean, if she fit what you got going on, she matches your vibe. What we talking about? You know what I mean, yeah, yeah. but if that's something that bothers you. Definitely don't. <laughs> yeah, like, don't go and pursue it. Like that's yeah, just kind of dumb. Yeah, 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 like like that shit don't bother me. Yeah, like that. But I feel like, like at our age, like what we, I just they, you're not thirty yeah. out this bitch. Like yeah, you should I just, be worried about how big body she got. Like, yeah, exactly. exactly. I don't even ask. Yeah, that's yeah, a, like, that's such an immature question yeah. to ask. Now, now I will say though, like you don't want. At least for me, you don't want no girl that didn't fuck the whole football team. It's right, I had it. Like, Facts. You know, but I definitely don't want to join that only got two bodies. I'm looking at her like, what the fuck. You yeah, like, get more. Like, I can't that? trust you. Can't like I, you, you need to go get some more and then come back. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, go experiment. Go out there and see what you like. Cause you ain't about to be getting them on my time. Yeah, wow. yeah nah, not when I'm involved. No, I ain't gonna lie, but you can trade her. Not trade her, but you know what? Nah, nah, right, right, right. Nah, 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 nah. It's not wow. even that. It's, it's just, just that. one thing it's I said. Like, true. I ain't gonna ever ask a woman her body count because I truly don't give a fuck. Yeah, I don't. If anything, if it was to come down to it, I'd more so be interested in who you've been with. If we from the same city, especially. Because yeah. shit, you might fuck around been with my cousin. Now I'm like, damn. Some shit. Yeah. Damn, yeah. this girl don't fuck my cousin. <laughs> I don't even... I, it's, it's, I can't bring you to the family reunion now. You know? Bro, yeah. Cousins <laughs> having side conversations. Like, yeah. You know, like, damn, you know how... Yo, what like at the club, yeah. man? Damn. <laughs> Soon as you yeah. see everybody wide-eyed and shit, you like, oh, man, what the fuck? Yeah, nah. <laughs> Yeah, nah. I mean, pull it to the side. Like, who you know in here? <laughs> <laughs> All 
right. <laughs> so um that concludes uh this episode and as y'all know we always give a final thought to give to the world so we what is your final thought man same as always for real spread more love not hate follow me on all socials that is just leak keep streaming the music i appreciate y'all all right all right haji what's your final thought uh eat more vegetables yo there's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of gmos going on out here you know especially in, you know uh when we talking about design and stuff you know it's a lot of pr uh What's the what's the term? I had just learned this other the other day. Uh plant growth regulators, you know, so it's basically fig za. It's like, you know, yeah. stay away from the fig za. <laughs> and uh follow me on all social media platforms as well. My Twitter is Haji the Upsetter. Uh my Instagram, I'm the movement. That's the only real things I want y'all to follow me on. <laughs> <laughs> but when you spell upsetter, there's no E at the end of upsetter, you know. So yeah, that's me on Twitter. All right, Greg, what's your final thought? Do more research. Always question everything. There's there's shit going on. Don't be a sheep. When in doubt, deny everything. <laughs> <laughs> deny, deny, deny. It's all a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> Accusation. <laughs> I, uh, my final thought is just follow the socials. Uh, GCC717 on Twitter. Uh, the Group Chat Chronicles on Facebook. Group Chat Chronicles 717 on Instagram and TikTok. Yeah, like it's what? what? <laughs> <laughs> Alcohol state, nigga. <laughs> uh, 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 like and subscribe to the YouTube, the group chat chronicles. Uh, shout out Swanee Visuals on the cam, mm-hmm. and I'd like to thank everybody for kicking it with us for however long we was here for, and we out. Philadelphia Eagles, twenty twenty three Super Bowl champions. Never once said fuck Remember these words. <laughs>